In a world where companies constantly compete to make their gadgets the thinnest and lightest on the market, important aspects such as durability and battery life often take a backseat in the production process. While aesthetics do play a big role when it comes to smartphones, it doesn't matter if I have a paper-thin and light phone, if its screen shatters on a single drop, or if the battery dies halfway throughout the day. Motorola clearly shared the same mindset when they launched the Droid Turbo 2 in late October of 2015. It's far from being a petite smartphone, but it offers great specs, an attractive, ultra-durable design, and some of the best battery life I've seen on a smartphone in the past year. The Droid Turbo 2 is being marketed towards power users and those who are rough on their smartphones, but does it live up to the high expectations that Motorola is making for it? Hey there everyone, and how are you guys doing today? My name is Joe Maring from Gadget Spot, and this is my full video review of the Motorola Droid Turbo 2. The Droid Turbo 2 is a smartphone that makes durability a high priority, and that's a nice breath of fresh air in today's market. One of the biggest draws to the phone is its shatterproof display thanks to something Motorola calls Moto Shatter Shield. The Shatter Shield system is made up of five different layers that prevent any part of the screen from shattering. The system is comprised of an aluminum chassis, a flexible AMOLED display, and three additional layers of protection over the display to ensure maximum security. Motorola is so confident in this technology that they guarantee your screen won't crack or shatter for four years. So, in real world testing, does it actually work? My review unit was dropped and even thrown face down on concrete, marble, tile, and wood, and the screen did not crack once at all. The screen did acquire numerous scratches during all this abuse, but that's to be expected as the top layer of shatter shield is essentially a plastic screen protector. The Droid Turbo 2 screen isn't impervious to cosmetic scratches, but it does do a great job of living up to Motorola's claims for it being shatterproof. To make the phone even more rugged, Motorola added a nano coating which makes the Turbo 2 water repellent. The phone isn't designed to be submerged in water, but it will be able to handle accidental splashes and light rain without going on the fritz. The Turbo 2's body is enclosed in an aluminum frame and the device as a whole weighs 169 grams and has a width of 78 millimeters. It's a bit chunkier and thicker than some of its competitors, but the increased dimensions make the phone feel very substantial and well built when held. The speakers for the phone are found on the front below the display, and although they're only mono speakers, audio still gets very loud and sounds pretty nice. Now the audio that comes from these can get muffled very easily if you place your hand over the speakers, but the setup is still 10 times better than ones found on phones where they're either placed on the back or underside of the device. My only real gripe with the build of the phone is that the power and volume buttons feel rather mushy when pressed. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but it can be annoying at times. As for the design, the Turbo 2 is the most customizable droid that we've ever seen, all in thanks to the inclusion of Motomaker. Motomaker allows you to make the front of the phone black or white, choose between silver, champagne, and gray for the color of the aluminum frame, adjust the accent colors throughout the phone, and even gives you the ability to choose between pebbled leather, ballistic nylon, and a soft grip with a textured triangle pattern for the back of the device, all available in a variety of different colors. It's really great to see Motorola bring Moto Maker to a phone that's not in the Moto X line, and this addition helps the Turbo 2 look exactly the way you want while still being extremely durable. Along with being shatterproof, the Turbo 2 screen is also very nice to look at. The phone's 5.4 inch Super AMOLED panel and resolution of 2560 by 1440 produces vibrant colors, great viewing angles, and solid outdoor visibility. The display doesn't get quite as bright or colorful as something such as the Samsung Galaxy S6, but there is no doubt that this is a quality display. Under the hood, Motorola's latest smartphone packs plenty of horsepower. Between the Snapdragon 810 processor and 3GB of super speedy DDR4 RAM, I never once encountered any slowdowns with the Turbo 2. Multitasking is buttery smooth, games run flawlessly, 
and even with tons of apps running in the background, the phone refuses to slow down. I did notice a couple of times that the back of the phone tended to heat up while playing Star Wars Battlefront Base Commander, but it never did make the phone uncomfortable to the touch. Motorola has always struggled with camera optics on their smartphones, but the company finally turned that around by adding well-received optics on the Moto X Pure Edition. I never got to go hands-on with that phone, so this is my first time with a Motorola phone since the Moto X second generation. While the cameras are a great improvement from what we saw in the past Moto Android smartphones, the quality of the pictures didn't really impress me. The rear camera has a 21 megapixel lens, but photos taken looked a bit bland in my opinion. They're perfectly fine for uploading to Instagram or Twitter, but I didn't think it was anything to write home about. There's very little shutter lag when snapping shots, but I did occasionally have trouble getting the Turbo 2 to focus on what I wanted to take a picture of, especially in dimmer areas. The 5 megapixel wide angle lens allows for detailed group shots, but the included front facing flash tends to do a lot more harm than good when it's used. When you're ready to take a photo with a Turbo 2, simply hold the phone and twist your wrist twice to hop right into the camera app. While some may love the simplicity of Motorola's camera application, I for one find myself quite annoyed by it every time I review a Motorola smartphone. The process of dragging an icon on the screen to change the focus and tapping the screen anywhere to snap a photo just doesn't work for me. While you are able to change the exposure level of shots with a simple slider, the control over your photos don't get much deeper than that. You do have access to HDR, panorama, and can change the quality you want to shoot in, but settings for ISO, white balance, and more are just non-existent. The one upshot to the camera app is the inclusion of a built-in barcode and QR scanner. You can easily download an app on other Android phones to do the exact same thing, but it is pretty handy to have this built right into the phone by default. So, what's the Turbo 2's 3760 mAh battery life like? Guys, I'm going to be honest with you. This thing rocks. On a day with non-stop usage, I turned the phone on at about 6.30 a.m. and did not have to plug it in until about 9.52 that night. With constant use of Hangouts, Facebook, Google+, and lots of time playing Battlefront Base Commander, I was able to squeeze out a whopping 4 hours and 35 minutes of screen on time, with 2% remaining at the very end of the day. That right there makes going back to my 2 hours of screen on time on my Galaxy S6 straight up brutal. You can get through an easy day of full use if you're a heavy user of your phone, but if you don't play many games and you're not on it all day long, you'll be able to get an easy two days of use out of this guy before having to charge up. And when it does come time to charge, the included Turbo Power 25 charger delivers up to 13 hours of additional use after just 15 minutes of charging. If you're a road warrior or a heavy power user, the Turbo 2 has the battery that you've been looking for. The Droid Turbo 2 is running Android 5.1.1 Lollipop, and each time I use a Motorola-made smartphone, I'm reminded once again as to why their take on Android is one of the absolute best out there. The user interface is nearly identical to stock Android, and is quite reminiscent of something you'd find on a Nexus smartphone. This lets the Turbo 2 move smoother and flow better than competing smartphones with heavy manufacturer skins. Where Motorola does add their flair is within the Moto app. From here, Motorola houses all of their special features, including Motorola Assist, various gestures and motions you can use, such as chopping your phone twice to turn on the flashlight, Moto Voice for triggering voice commands while the display is off, and Moto Display for accessing notifications without turning on the entire screen. Now you may use all of these features, or you may only use one or two of them. The beauty of this is that they're all tucked away in a single application, so the rest of your phone doesn't get cluttered up with things you may never touch. My biggest gripe with the Turbo 2 is the massive amount of pre-installed bloatware. Between the suite of Amazon apps, Cookie Jam, Game of War, Go90, Magic Rush, NFL Mobile, Slacker Radio, and all of the wonderful 9 Verizon applications that are installed on there, the Turbo 2 comes with a total of 54 applications right out of the box. Some of these can be uninstalled, but you're stuck with the vast majority of them. The base 32GB of internal storage does remedy this a bit, and if you find yourself needing more space, you can either upgrade to 64GB for an additional $100, or 
or at a micro SD card that can add up to a whole 2 extra terabytes of data. If you're interested in getting the Turbo 2, your carrier choice is limited to Verizon Wireless here in the US. On an installment program, the phone will set you back $21.83 a month on the Verizon plan. You can also buy the phone outright for $624 through Verizon, but doing so through Motorola will allow you to use the Moto Maker to tweak the look of the phone to your exact liking. This pricing is about average when compared to other flagships, and when factoring in the Moto Shatter Shield technology, it starts to become a bit easier to justify this price. You could opt for something like Motorola's own Moto X Pure Edition and save a couple hundred bucks while still retaining the same general experience, but you would be giving up a couple very key features that make the Turbo 2 the powerhouse of a smartphone that it is. Motorola really delivered in 2015. The third generation Moto G, Moto X Pure Edition, and second generation Moto 360 were all very well received by both critics and consumers. However, with 2015 now officially in the books, I have to say that the Droid Turbo 2 is my favorite product that the company came out with in the past year. It has the world's first shatterproof screen that actually works, has an incredibly customizable design, features a great looking display, great performance, industry leading battery life, and top notch software. The lackluster camera, in both terms of the quality of the photos and the app itself, do put a damper on the whole photo taking experience, but it is still serviceable. Besides, this is not a phone that you buy for the amazing cameras. You buy this phone for its shatterproof screen and never ending battery life. In those regards, the Turbo 2 soars. The biggest downside to the Turbo 2 is ultimately its exclusivity to Verizon Wireless. You could technically import the Moto X Force, which is the international GSM version of the Turbo 2, to the US for use on carriers such as AT&T and T-Mobile, but the average consumer most likely isn't ever aware that this is an option. All in all, the Droid Turbo 2 is an excellent piece of tech. It's the perfect phone for hardcore power users, and it's a pure joy to use. Motorola may have had a solid year, but this is easily the best Droid and Motorola smartphone that we've seen to date. If you're on Verizon and you've got the cash, or you're willing to import the international version from the UK, you'd be hard pressed to be disappointed with the Turbo 2's offerings. It's not a perfect smartphone, but the camera issues aside, it's pretty damn close. So guys, thank you so much for watching my full review of the Motorola Droid Turbo 2. If you have any questions about this device, please feel free to ask away down in the comments below. And for links to the full written review, the Gadget Spot website, or any of the social media sites we are on, all those links can be found in the description below. But that's going to do it for this video today. I've been Joe Marin with Gadget Spot. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.